Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. In today's video, we're gonna be making a beautiful hibiscus infused body wash. Not only does the hibiscus flower impart a beautiful, deep, rich color to this body wash formula, but it's also really known for its great skin benefits. So unlike a humectant, which we're gonna be using some humectant properties in this formula as well, a humectant will draw moisture to the skin. Well, hibiscus is known for its ability to help the skin actually retain moisture. Retaining moisture is a big factor in how hydrated your skin is. So the more hydrated your skin is, the more youthful and the more soft and less dull and dry it can appear. In my attempt to bring more plant matter and botanicals into my formulas, this has actually been one of the favorites that I have formulated so far. I'm really, really loving this, the feel of this body wash, and I think you will too. In this video today, I'm gonna to be giving you a step-by-step -step full visual tutorial and process of how to put together this beautiful body wash, along with a description of the ingredients and why I'm using each ingredient that I'm using. If you would like the full written recipe plus a full written detailed step-by-step -step tutorial with amounts and percentages, please head on over to my Patreon campaign where you can unlock this recipe for just a $5 pledge. There are also over two and a half years now of archive recipes that you can unlock for the same $5 pledge. Besides the $5 tier, there are three other tiers for you to take a look at and take advantage of if you like. They each have their own exclusive benefits, things like live classes and live monthly hangouts, coupon codes, and much more. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the link below in the description box. I really hope that you'll check it out. We've built a lovely community. And thank you to all of my patrons who have subscribed so far. And some of you have been with me since the inception and I really, really do appreciate all of your support. All right, let's make a beautiful hibiscus body wash. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and infuse this hot distilled water with some whole dried hibiscus flowers. Now this is something that I don't typically weigh out. It's more of um, how it looks. I do have more water in this container than I'm gonna need because the dried hibiscus flowers are gonna absorb some of the water and some of the water is gonna evaporate off due to the heat. So all I do is take my dried hibiscus flowers and they have a nice botanical smell and I'm just going to drop handfuls of them into this water. I'm going for a deep but also kind of a bright red color because the finished product is going to have a deep kind of a dark reddish color. So as you can see my water is starting to infuse already. I've placed in a couple handfuls of the flowers and we're just gonna let this steep and infuse until we get the color that we like. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow that, that process to happen and I'll bring you right back when we're ready for the next step. All right, my flowers have been infusing now for a few minutes and we have this beautiful deep red, kind of a bright red color. And the next step for us to do is go ahead and strain off these hibiscus leaves and also weigh out the water we're gonna need for this project. So how I'm gonna do that is place my, my pitcher here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and place a strainer right on top, and then I'm gonna tear out my scale, and I'm gonna weigh out the amount of liquid needed for this project, while also straining the hibiscus flowers. Okay, almost perfect. All we had left over was just that little bit in here. So we're gonna go ahead and set that aside. Okay, so now that all my flowers are strained and we have our beautiful hibiscus infused water here to start with, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and finish off the water phase of this formula. So we are gonna go ahead and add in some water-based ingredients. That means they're gonna be soluble in water. And the first thing we're gonna be adding in is some pomegranate glycerite. Now you have seen me use glycerites in my more recent formulas, so please check out my other videos on how to um, use these in your skincare. But basically a glycerite 
is glycerin that's been infused with fresh plant matter, fruits, vegetables, and the glycerin draws out the constituents or the good parts of the fresh plant matter. And then you can use the strained glycerin for um, skincare preparations and things like that. So today we're gonna be using a pomegranate glycerite that I made, and I will be placing a full detailed written tutorial within the tutorial on how to create the glycerite for this recipe. So we are gonna be using a little bit of this. I was hoping to use this as um, a replacement to glycerin, but I don't think I have enough in here to use. So I'm gonna to have to use this plus some glycerin, but this could be used in place of glycerin completely, or like I'm doing here, you can use a little bit of the glycerite and then some glycerin or just all glycerin if you don't wanna make a glycerite. But today I ran out of uh, my pomegranate glycerite that I made, need to make some more. So I'm gonna be using the rest as uh, straight glycerin. Now glycerin is a humectant. So this is the humectant property I was talking about in the intro. And the humectants are gonna help the skin to draw moisture. The humectant's gonna draw moisture from the air to your skin. So it's very hydrating and very good. And we're just gonna go ahead and give that a good stir. You have to excuse my dogs barking in the background. They are outside and it's very windy out today, so they've been barking at the wind. And then the pomegranates, the reason why we're using the pomegranate glycerin here is because pomegranates are full of antioxidants and it's very um, skin repairing and healing, so it's a nice thing to add to your, your uh, formulas. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is take the temperature really quick because we need to be adding in our preservative and we want to make sure that our formula is not too hot at this time to add in our preservative because we don't want to kill off the preservative at all. So we are sitting at 136, 136 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so 136 degrees is a bit too hot to add and we're gonna be using liquid Germol Plus today and it needs to be added in at lower than 122 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and allow this to cool down before we add in our next um, ingredients to this formula and I'll bring you right back when we're ready for the next step. Okay, we're still waiting for this temperature to drop just a little bit. So while we're waiting for this to drop, we're gonna go ahead and add in our fragrance oil and that will help also bring down the temperature as well. So we are gonna be using Sweet Nectar and Hibiscus Fragrance Oil by Brambleberry. And I think it's the perfect smell for this bright and beautiful looking body wash. It's tart and juicy and it definitely has like a hibiscus floral note um, kind of like on like the base note or the anchor note here. It's got top juicy tart notes. It's really gorgeous. I really am a fan of these type of fruit and floral fragrances. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add in our fragrance oil. Now, a lot of you guys will ask me um, questions regarding fragrances that you've used that are different than the ones that I've recommended for recipes and really my response to you is the same like I test out the fragrance oils in my formulas and each fragrance oil is going to act differently in your formulas even in your surfactant based liquid soaps like we're making here and so if you have an issue with your soap getting too cloudy with your liquid shower gel getting too cloudy or thinning out or thickening up too much. That's all due to fragrance oils. So if you're gonna be using a fragrance oil that's different than what I'm recommending here, you have to do your own testing to see if it works with, with your formula or with the formula that I'm providing here. Okay, so I know that the fragrance oil is obviously not water soluble. However, I do like to add it into the water phase because I like to add my surfactants, the bubbling agent, the cleansing and bubbling agents in last. 
so that we don't kick up too many bubbles. So that's why I go ahead and add the fragrance oil and the preservative in at this point. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the temperature again and see if we're ready to go ahead and add in that preservative yet. And we are almost there, but not quite, so I'll bring you right back when we're ready to go ahead and do that. Okay, so we are finally ready to go ahead and add in that preservative, and we're gonna be using Liquid Germal Plus. And the reason we're using that preservative is because it's great for water-based formulas, and it's got a wide pH range, and it's broad spectrum, so it can go into a lot of different um, pH ranges safely. So we are going to be adding in our Liquid Germal Plus and we are using a preservative here because the pH in this surfactant based recipe is going to be um, on the lower side of things. So you do want to add a preservative just to make sure that um, bacteria and mold and stuff can't grow. Okay. We're going to give that a good stir to incorporate everything. And then the next thing we're going to do is add in our surfactants. Now this is a pretty easy recipe formula to make. Um, so it was just all the ingredients that I showed you before. And then the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and add in the surfactants. And then we're going to thicken the soap up. So the first surfactant that we're going to be using here, you guys have seen me use this in my sea moss body wash. I think it's a great um, surfactant. It's called sodium lauryl ether sulfate or SLES. It's otherwise known as sodium laureth sulfate and it's not the same as sodium lauryl sulfate. Um, it's much gentler. I find it to be a very good surfactant because it creates a nice, beautiful, gorgeous lather. Um, but it's also gentle. Sometimes people have a hard time finding this one. I, you can get sodium lauryl sulfate at um, Bulk Apoth Apothecary, and I'll go ahead and put the link in the description box because I know sometimes this one can be a little bit of a harder one to come by. It's an anionic surfactant, and I think it has a gorgeous lather. It's plant-based, and you can use it as a primary surfactant. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our SLES. Now you're gonna also notice some changes in the color. This is also something that I wanted to talk to you about. pHs, different pH ranges are gonna change the color of your soap if you're using a water tea infusion like we're doing here. You can already see my tea is coming up to a bright, kind of gorgeous, fuchsia color because I'm changing the pH with the in introduction of this surfactant. Now your finished product does not always turn out this beautiful which is one of the reasons why I was so excited for this formula because the pH range is such that this turns out to be a gorgeous gorgeous color. Um, sometimes this can turn brown if the pH gets too high, you'll see this sort of infusion where your whole, the whole point is to make this a beautiful pink and you can use roses to do this or other types of flowers, calendula flowers to make it nice and yellow. However, it doesn't always work. So I want you to be aware that it works with this formula and you need to test it out and see. The higher the pH on your um, formulas, the more chance you have of your formula turning completely brown and unlike the color that you are imagining in your head. This one happens to work really good. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our next surfactant, which is cocomidal propyl betaine, otherwise known as cocoa betaine. And it's a gentle surfactant, very gentle, adds nice bubbles and foam, also plant-based. And this is an amphoteric surfactant, so it can be mixed with any other type of surfactant with no problem. Okay, and then the next surfactant we're gonna be using is cocoa glucose. And we're using cocoa glucose because it's super gentle. You guys have probably been noticing that all the color changes since I've started adding the surfactants in. Um, but we're using cocoa glucose because it's a super gentle, mild surfactant and it helps 
with foam and bubbles. You can also use it in um, facial cleansing, like solid lotions or creams, that cleansing creams and those sort of things. It's super gentle. So we're gonna be adding in some cocoa glucose. This can also be used in shampoos. Um, it's got a thick, thicker kind of viscosity as you can probably see as it's going in. Okay. The final surfactant we're gonna be using in just a small percentage here is doesn't really do anything to add bubbles or foam but it does have some cleansing properties to it and it's highly emollient so you're gonna love the way this formula fills this formula feels soft and silky it has leaves your skin feeling really soft and silky um, so we're using peg six caprylic capric triglycerides and we are using this one mostly for its beautiful emollient properties I think you're gonna love the way this liquid soap feels um, with the humectants and then also this last surfactant it's just very hydrating and moisturizing and leaves your skin feeling super soft you can feel it as you're washing it it's almost a conditioning type feeling okay we're gonna stop there we're gonna give this formula a good stir to make sure our surfactants are also all mixed into the formula. Oh, another reason why I like to use the SLES is because uh, it helps the fragrance oil combine with the water. Not all, not all, um, surfactants can do that so some surfactants just don't have any of those properties solubilizing properties to it but the the cocoa betaine and the SLES are particularly known for um, also their solubilizing properties so it does help the oil the fragrance oil to combine now if you were going to use more oil in this like if you wanted to use like uh, skin loving oils to make this more nourishing um, you would have to have some sort of solubilizer but in small amounts you can add in fragrance oil and things like that and the solubility factor of the SLES and the cocoa betaine works perfectly fine to keep them all combined and homogenous okay so I have stirred everything in and then we're going to go ahead and read the pH on this formula and as you can see right now it's a really dark beautiful color and I want to show you what the pH reads on this Okay, so my pH is sitting right around a six, which is actually okay for a body wash. Um, you know, in the seven or six range is okay. However, I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit to the 5.5 or the five range, and then you're gonna see the color of this come down to even a little bit lighter than it is now and a real beautiful color. All right, so all I'm gonna do to adjust this pH is just sprinkle the tiniest bit of citric acid in just a little bit. I don't want to change the pH too much on this. Um, probably going to add just a little bit more, but I'm adding it in straight and then stirring it in to dissolve. forget I'm making a little bit bigger of a batch today I'm going to be testing these out testing this out on my website so I'm making a moderate a moderate sized batch just to see how well they sell and I'm going to go ahead and continue to adjust this pH and I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step okay we've brought this pH down to about a 5.2 which is excellent. And then the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and thicken up this formula. And we're gonna wait for it to get down to room temperature before we thicken it up so we have a good idea of what the consistency is. And I didn't wanna bring the pH down anymore because with the addition of the thickener, we may actually um, bring it down just a little bit more. So we wanna stay right around in that five range to 5.5. So I will be right back when this has reached 
room temperature and we'll go ahead and thicken up the soap. All right, we're back to go ahead and thicken up the soap. It is sitting right around room temperature in my house right now. Um, so we are gonna be using a product called Liquid Crothix. It is a soap thickener. It works great in surfactant-based soaps like this, as well as uh, hot process liquid soaps made from potassium hydroxide. So the way that this works, and you guys know I love, I love to use glucose D um, most of the time for my thickeners, but today I am using Crothix because I've actually tested out glucose in this recipe and although it does thicken up the liquid soap, it doesn't incorporate as nicely as the Crothix does in this recipe. So we're going to be using liquid Crothix today and also I've noticed that the Crothix does add a nice conditioning feeling uh, to the final product as well, which is nice. So this is just add in as much as you need, thicken it as much as you like, up to 8% of the volume, the weight of this. So we're definitely not gonna be putting in up to 8%, but you can go up that high if you need to, and in some cases I have. Um, so we just add in a little bit at a time. This particular liquid Crothix I purchased on Amazon. You can get it from any soap and candle supplier, raw material supplier. Okay, so right away, you're gonna notice some thickening and the viscosity is gonna start to change. And then you're just gonna continue to add a little bit at a time until you get the desired consistency. And right now you can see it is getting a little bit thicker, but it's still very thin. So we're just gonna to continue to add a little bit more in at a time. Until we reach the desired consistency. So I will go ahead and continue to thicken this up and I'll bring you back when it's where I want it and we're ready to go ahead and pour it into our finished, our, um, Our containers. All right we are finished thickening up this soap and I just wanted to give you an idea of what the consistency looks like before we bottle this up but this is what it looks like. I like it to be sort of like when you pull honey up on a spoon and, it, and you let it drizzle down just kind of like that. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and place this into a pour pitcher, and then we're gonna go ahead and fill up some of these eight ounce Boston Round containers. Um, I did get these little Boston Round containers from Nature's Garden. And it does say eight ounces, like this is the eight ounce sized bottle but I find in volume that they do hold about 10 ounces of liquid soap. So we're just going to go ahead and fill these up. All right, everybody, there they are, all bottled up, looking gorgeous. Um, it looks a little darker on screen than they are in real life, but they are a beautiful hibiscus red color, and this fragrance oil works really well. It doesn't cloud up the soap gel at all. So I wanna go ahead and give you a little bit of a, a lather demo here so you can see how this works. 
All right, I wanna go ahead and show you how well this lathers up. I'm gonna do it both in the loofah and then on my plain hands. Um, so you can see it's, it's just got a gorgeous, I'm just taking what's left over here, a little bit left over here from my pour pitcher. And it's just got a really, really gorgeous skin feel. So go ahead and pour a little bit into your loofah. I really like to use it this way. It just helps activate that lather. It smells amazing. It smells really, really good. So this has a really, take a look at the, the lather here. It's got like tight and dense, creamy bubbles. They feel really um, soft and silky and hydrating. So this is how I use it personally. However, you definitely can just pour a little bit into your hands. I just wanted to show you the difference with the lather. Some people have actually asked that question. Just show, it, show me what it looks like without the loofah. And actually, without the loofah, this particular body wash just has a really nice emollient feel to it. Conditioning, a very conditioning and emollient feel. And there you go. That's what it looks like, both with a loofah and without a loofah. I'm very proud of this recipe. I hope you guys like it too. If you liked this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please remember to leave a comment or question below. Please subscribe to my channel, share this video with a friend. All right, catch you on the next video. Keep shining everybody, bye.